humidifiers are essential because your average room has 25 to 30% humidity, while it should be at least 40. And while most websites and reviews talk about the benefits of moisturizing your skin or soothing your infant's cold, which is true, seems like everyone is skipping the biggest and most important part, local immunity. To make it simple, mucus makes immunoglobulin and acts like a castle wall, which is bombarded daily with millions of viruses and bacteria as your antibodies and everything else are just chilling, waiting for a breach. The local immunity mostly depends on the viscosity of the mucus. If it's dry, it's dead and it's not protecting you. So all the bacteria is free to multiply and storm the castle. So by just drinking some more water and having a humidifier, you might be lucky to skip all of these or even not catch COVID when someone in your household already has. I mean, it seems like a more convincing argument than cracked lips and your houseplants will love it as will your wooden furniture and even your paintings. But there are so many available and at all price points. So what do I buy? Vaporizers are just like aroma diffusers. They work by heating up the water. Obviously, takes time, lots of electricity. And just like with a candle, if your kids or pets turn it over, they might get burnt. Air wash, or like their other name, they work by evaporating water. They're usually bigger, less efficient, and way, way harder to clean. And then there's the most popular option, ultrasonic. Instant start, easy to clean, energy friendly. You can even lick the vibrating element without any consequences. Ultrasonics are pretty basic and all work in the same way. So the main parameters are water capacity, which obviously has a direct correlation with the amount of water it can pump out and thus how fast and how big of a room it can cover. In fact, the size of the mist or how far it shoots up is also important to avoid fogging and wetting your surroundings. I have tested all settings for hours, as you can see, napkins, papers and the surfaces themselves, not even a hint of being damp. And anything else is pretty much a quality of life improvement, like a built-in humidity sensor. So rather than using a low, medium or high setting, you leave it up to the machine. And in the case of SwitchBot, by the way, you can dial in down to a percentage. What I found interesting, you cannot access the sensor data of the built-in meter and it's not calibrated perfectly, which is fine. Because ideally, you should be using an external sensor at your nose level, especially in your bedroom. I guess easy to do in the office too. And speaking of meters, you can buy an external one directly from SwitchBot that takes little know-how to set up and link with your humidifier. You can even calibrate it, not something you really see often. Well, mine came accurate right out of the box. Still, a nice feature to have. And if you get the hub, you can integrate it for your home automation. It works with Siri, Google, and you know who. For example, to turn on your air conditioner, those, by the way, remove humidity as a natural byproduct of cooling. So a humidifier is useful all year long. You can also retrofit your old heater's thermostat with a SwitchBot bot linked to the meter. If, say, you're renting and can't upgrade, already covered in my previous video. Pairing the meter and humidifier is as easy as setting if then. Unfortunately, you cannot use the meter reading for the auto function, probably due to battery life. Remote control. While you can press a button to turn them off, having a remote makes life easier or not needing a remote. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, phone, right? And you don't have to open the app either. Just set up a widget on your home screen. Even better, just tell it to turn on, off, or change the settings. Having it online also gives you the opportunity to start it before leaving work or adjust without waking up the kids. Being able to link it with other smart home devices is a great feature. For example, I have my air purifier turn off whenever my humidifier starts working. But first, let's just appreciate the minimalistic, simple design just like my purifier. I want it to be somewhere tucked in a corner and not drawing attention. After all, 
We don't live in an ad and don't base our personalities around a humidifier. Sure, you do have to demonstrate the product. It's a commercial after all. But what's up with all the bright colors, lights, and gimmicky displays? Or at least, mention the position requirements so I can hide your monstrosities. So yeah, where do we place them? Let's Google. Five meters from the walls and furniture? For an article that mentions experts six times, dude really does have a lack of common sense. But most do agree on two feet or 60 centimeters from the floor to avoid puddles. Well, I ran for 12 hours straight on the same floor. No dampness, no nothing. The mist, as previously mentioned, goes up high and evaporates. So as long as it's not touching your walls, curtains, and furniture, you're pretty much fine. And maybe consider buying a portable or ceiling fan, as using one in tandem with your AC will significantly reduce the temps and your bills during the heating season. But that's a topic for another video. The fervor it is, the less fan noise, and occasional water gurgling. Personally, I can't even stand clocks ticking. And with the fully transparent tank, I can easily gauge the remaining water. The top filling design makes refilling a breeze. And if you do decide to fill it with tap water, you don't have to worry about water spilling or dripping. Well, maybe a few drops. Likely you are not going to jump and shake it like I am. But I would not recommend tap water. So back to the air purifier and why do I stop it? When using the ultrasonic humidifier, the particle count skyrockets and the usually inaudible fan gets loud as hell. Depending on the purifier's sensor and the water used in the humidifier, there could be two reasons. Your purifier might see the fine water droplets that have not yet been evaporated as particles and try to remove them. Or the problem might be the water itself, as tap water contains dissolved salt and there are microorganisms found even in treated water, plus anything from the pipes themselves. Just imagine what you're breathing in if this is how the humidifier looks. The guys at AWARE did a little testing with all kinds of water and influence on the PM 2.5 levels, if you're interested. Link in the description. So the tiny UV light that some manufacturers are pushing, not gonna help you. Distilled water? Well, and it's not that expensive, especially when buying in bulk, but you still should clean your humidifier weekly. And that's easy to do with some citric acid. A few tablespoons per liter, mix till dissolved, and leave for 15 minutes or more. Shake the tank vigorously. I also use it for my steam cooker, kettle, all the time. And unlike vinegar or bleach, it doesn't smell. You don't need gloves, and you can even eat it. Cool tidbit. SwitchBot actually leaves the fan on working for some time after you switch it off to dry out the air ducts. Not something I think I have ever seen in the dozen or so humidifiers I have used in my life. And something as small as a detachable cable makes it much more easier to clean and store. Just don't mix them up. As an average essential oil enjoyer, I also appreciate the special chamber photos. Just a few drops and you get a nice smell that's not overpowering. I usually put on some jazz or rain sounds and just chill or meditate. All in all, the SwitchBot humidifier offers incredible bang for your buck. Looks pretty good and works well. Share this video with the people you care about and stay healthy. It took months to make this video, so a like and comment would be greatly appreciated. You can support me by buying one with my referral link or tip me directly.